Welcome back to Texas. Bob Varsha and Dorsey Schrader with you for the final event of the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup. The field is rolling off under cool, cloudy skies. Street tracks are always a challenge. Here's Mike Lewis to talk about how you get around Houston quickly. Well, the key to going quick around Houston is really to get the power down and get, get it on the ground, not to be spinning the rear tires and get the car to point into the corners. And, and you've got to make the car live. I mean, here you've got, uh, we're seeing uh, the, the being being a walled circuit, it's kind of uh, it's kind of a tunnel. The air just sits there; it doesn't really move. We're seeing oil temperatures of 270, 280, incredible oil temperatures. So you've got to get the car to live, and it's got to turn, and and you've got to not make a mistake for about uh, what about uh, an hour and 20 minutes. Not making a mistake, and that is tough on city streets built for street cars, not race cars, Dorsey. Well, when you have 10 turns in a mile and a half street course, you have a handful of race car to deal with. I'll tell you that because of the varying grips around here. So it should be an interesting race, that's for sure. No question about that. As you can see, most of the turns are at least 90 degrees and only one real straightaway to speak of. And oh, there's Leighton Reese in the black and orange Corvette almost going around on the warm up lap. Here's a look at the starting grid for today's race. Paul Genelosi will start on pole next to the only man who can catch him for the championship, Johnny Miller. Ryan Simo, last year's champion, will start third. Tommy Archer, with a victory in his Dodge Viper this year, will be fourth. Then Lou Gelati and Justin Bell, this year's Rookie of the Year and winner of the most recent race at Laguna Seca. Mike Lewis in the Amerisuites Jaguar will be on the inside of row four. Leighton Reese, whom you just saw, losing an early battle for traction on the inside of row five. And here's a look down through the rest of the grid. As we mentioned, the starting grid was based on championship points, which means we have some fast guys at the back who haven't run the whole series, didn't have enough points to start higher up, and they will be coming forward. We'll keep a particular eye on the 53 of Tony Ave. There is Leighton Reese. We mentioned a moment ago he almost got the back ahead of the front. Let's take another look, Dorsey. Well, he's out here scrubbing tires right now. Watch there on the top of the screen. You see him get all kind of crossed up. Probably had to put the clutch in to keep that car from spinning out right there. Now the field is forming up two by two. There is Reese. Ninth in the championship. A lot of drivers with a chance to move up. Everyone wanting to do well in the final race of the season before they head into the offseason. <laughs> oh, and Paul Genelosi almost loses it. Well, when you got 650 horsepower and a lot of torque on a street circuit, that's the kind of thing you get if you're not careful. Tires could be key. Once again, here's Biz. In checking with everyone up and down the pit lane, they're all using the BFG 200. That is the softer tire. They want that grip out on those acceleration straights out of the slow corners. And they also need the lateral grip on all the 90-degree left-handers. This is the tire everyone chose to go with. Well, you heard Mike Lewis say that you got to get that launch off the corner, and that's why they're going that way. The question is, will they last? Now the field forms up two by two. The flag man has the green, and he waves it. We are underway. Final round of the Trans Am Championship for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup. At the end of this race, Paul Genelosi moving into the early lead may have it, or Johnny Miller will. And Lou Gelati goes up the inside to take over fourth from Tommy Archer and that Blue Viper, and there's contact. Boy, they did rub right there. Gelati's been very aggressive last couple of races, running really well right now. Oh, look at this. Leighton Reese lights up the rears, breaking into the corner. Keep in mind, a lot of rain. It's a very green racetrack, and you see the tires squirming under acceleration. And dancing these heavy cars through the streets is not as easy as it looks, I can tell you that. Once again, this time Gelati tortures the hides. Well, you don't want to do that for very long without getting off the brake, because you get a flat spot this early in the race, you're going to have a miserable rest of the afternoon. Passing is always a huge problem on street circuits, with those concrete barriers right there at the curbside. Right, these guys being really aggressive at the early start of this race, when the tires are still cold like this, it's so easy to make a mistake. A mistake on a street course is a crash. And Archer got a little bit squirrely there. He's got Mike Lewis just behind. I'm sure his, uh, his adrenaline's going. He didn't like getting jumped by Lou at the start. I know that. 
It's Genelosi, Miller, Simo, Gelati, and Simo goes up the inside of Miller for second. Boy, he made that look really easy. He just snuck right on in there. I don't know if uh, Johnny was ready for that or not. Well, Simo is out of the championship chase. Miller might have been just that little bit more careful knowing he has to finish this race, and he has to finish well ahead of Paul Genelosi oh. to have any chance. We've got a problem here. Bob Ruman and Tommy Drissy. Yeah, and they've gotten together in one of the tighter areas of the racetrack, had contact uh, with each other, and I think possibly Ruman with the wall. Paul Genelosi opening up about a six-car length advantage on this man, Brian Simo, and the Tommy Bahama Mangusta. Let's take another look at the pass, Dorsey. Well, it looked like right there Johnny Miller got in a little trouble. I saw some tire smoke off the back. Simo was right on top of it. He just stuck the nose right in there. Now here's the Ruman Dreesey incident. Look at that. Dreesey just pushing him along. <laughs> Still hasn't got off the gas. And Ruman lost several spots. There is Simo firmly into second. Here's John Bisignano. Tom Gloy, you've been working on this car all weekend long to get the handling just right, and Brian just blew by into second place. He must be happy right now. Well, we are. We, you know, there's a brand new Riley and Scott, and uh, we haven't done as much testing as we probably would have liked, but the cars responded very well this weekend and obviously ran second at the last event, so we're looking forward to this race, see what happens at the end. What did you do to get the grip out of it? I brought Riley along, the designer of the car, and uh, he's been working very hard. Brian's been doing a good job driving. Good luck with the rest of it. Riley and Scott chassis built in shops in Indianapolis, Indiana. One of a couple of new chassis on the Trans Am scene this year. The Panos out there as well. Right now, Paul Genelosi is drawing away from Brian Simo in second. Race between champions. We'll be back to Houston. Welcome back to the Texaco Haviland Grand Prix of Houston. Trans Am Series action. Bob Varsha, Dorsey Schrader with you. The running order is Paul Genelosi, Brian Simo, Johnny Miller, and then this great battle for fourth. Lou Gelati, Mike Lewis, Tommy Archer, Justin Bell, and Leighton Reese. There's Bell in the orange number 40 from Jim Durhag's team. Coming off a win in the most recent race at Mazda Raceway at Laguna Seca. And there is Tony Ave in the Panos charging forward. He's now in 14th after starting 23rd. Of course, that's the two cars right there, identically painted cars. Kerry Alexander, the other car, and team owner. Uh, those two guys haven't had it now. They are right on Randy Ruhlman for 13th. See that little whiffs of brake, brake smoke as they get right to the edge of traction there going in the brake zone. And in heavy traffic like this, you better know what you're doing. Ah, this is Reppin, this is your street battle right here. This is what it always looks like. One mistake by any of those guys and you get the, uh, the big mess. Several corners of this racetrack are taken as a single turn. You know, they're all blind, Bob. You turn into those corners, you can't see around it. So if there's something around in front of you, it just, there's nowhere to go a lot of times. When you're running this close, you really just don't have much margin of error at all. Well, that pretty much sums up street racing, temporary circuits, very little grip, no sight lines to speak of, no margin for error. You know, some of these corners are so tight that the car doesn't have enough steering in the front of it to make the corner without sliding the back around. So you'll see the backs of these cars sometimes really kicking out. Gelati holding up the train right now. Always known for the horsepower, a modestly budgeted team. He's had a great season aside from a heavy crash at Portland. Well, he uses CRD power, and uh, those are real good motors, but maybe not so good on a street course because remember the hookup problem. You got to be able to get the power to the ground. Back to the lead now. There is Paul Genelosi, who suffered such an incredible disappointment last year, basically handing over the title to Brian Simo. Well, Paul's really good on these street courses, and of course, uh, Simo needs the win. Paul doesn't. Paul just needs to have a good finish today to clinch. Simo, if he wants to be second place, beat that man there, Johnny Miller, has got to uh, probably get to the front here. Automation direct Cutler Hammer Jaguar. That great paint job, the smiling face. And then this scramble for fourth. Five cars nose to tail. What Mike Lewis and the Ford once by that Chevy real bad. Looks like Lewis is the faster of the two cars. I think you're right. I think uh, Lugilotti's holding that train back a little bit. So you got a Corvette, you got a Jaguar, you got a Viper, and another Corvette. And 
sound of American thunder on the streets of Houston, Texas. An old-style Western shootout this year's Trans Am title and the BF Goodrich Tires Cup that goes with it. You know, we were just talking about that the other day, how good these cars sound between these walls. The echo of those V8s, man, thundering through a city. There's nothing like it. We had a little bit of bright sun as the cars rolled off, but as you can see, no stark shadows now, which would indicate that you're not getting direct sunlight on the track, so it's going to be cooling down just that little bit more. Well, I saw a debris flag back there. Look at here, Tony Ave going up the inside with them. Kerry Alexander likes that. He's going to do it, too. And that's up to 10th place from all the way at the back for him. I saw a debris flag or an oil flag uh, a couple corners ago, so something going on back there, too. Oh, oh. trouble. Ave just got in way too deep. Way too oh, and he's, he's not done getting in trouble. He's still in trouble. He tried to save it. I wonder if something broke. I mean, he looked like he got in too, too deep under brakes, but then right in the middle of the corner after he saved it, 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 it just went around on him again. Now, this is a dangerous position. He's just beyond the apex of that corner, stopped just off the racing line. Let's take another look. Well, here under braking, definite lockup. He gets that save, but this one right here, See, that looks like a rear end broke or something. The thing just snatched sideways all of a sudden. Oh, and he nearly got tagged head on. You see it here. Oh, 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 you're not kidding. That was Don Sack that just, just barely missed the front end there. Chris Ave waiting for the field to go by. And this is the race leader going by, so he'll go a lap down. Yeah, I suspect something might have broken at the back of that car because he's not been able to free fire and get back in the race. Adding to the problems of traction, you have a pavement change between different sections of the racetrack, going from new asphalt to old, and that sort of thing can catch a driver out as well. Well, like I say, that oh, we got a full course caution coming out right now. Like I said before, any mistake on our street course is a wreck, and uh, we just saw it happen. First full course caution of the day, lap eight of 60. Oh, ooh, this is the battle for fourth. Wow, those guys obviously didn't see the yellow in time, and that was almost a five-car <laughs> wreck right there, trying to get slowed down behind Lou Gelati. Well, they had a great race going, and as you see, Tommy Archer in that blue Dodge Viper has gotten around Michael Lewis for fifth. Now he looks like he wants fourth under the yellow. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he wants to go by Lou Gelati under yellow, but he can't do that. So I think what he's doing is going up there and signaling. We're under a full course caution, so we'll take a quick break and return for more Trans Am action from the streets of Houston, Texas. Don't go away. We'll be right back. The Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup is presented by BF Goodrich Tires. Take control. And brought to you by Automation Direct. Low-cost quality automation products shipped the same day. Welcome back to Houston. Still under the caution, there is Tony Ave being pushed away. John Bisignano has more on his situation from the pits. Well, the word is, the early word is, the uh, reason for Tony Ave's retirement is a broken drivetrain. We don't know exactly where, if it's in the gearbox or the drive line itself or in the rear end, but something went wrong in the whole drivetrain for Tony Ave out early here in Houston. Well, we saw the back end of the car snatch sideways in the middle of that corner. Probably the rear end locked up, and that's what's taking him out of there. Another of the challenges of street racing, some of these braking areas can be very rough, very hard on drive lines. There is the safety car. We hope to go green shortly. Paul Genelosi followed by Brian Simo and Johnny Miller, not where he needs to be if he's to have any hope of beating Genelosi for the championship. Of course, all these guys already realize what they have to do to win that championship, so... You know, it's not like uh, they should be letting Paul run away with this thing. They need to get up there and start hammering. Lights are now out on the safety car. It will pull off, and we will be back underway. The field bunched once again at the Texaco Haviland Grand Prix of Houston. Genelosi gets a good start, opening up a couple of quick car lengths on Simo. I guess this battle for fourth is going to go on all day long. These guys just seem... Joined nose to tail. You have to have a lot of patience on these street courses because frustration sets in and you'll start making mistakes if you don't just let it come to you a little bit. As Mike Lewis said at the top of the show, the key is not to make a mistake. On the long back straightaway, Jenna Lozzi and the Johnson controls only Jaguar. 
Jenna Losey can go on and clinch this third championship. He will have done so in three different brands of cars. Ford Mustang, Chevrolet Corvette, now a Jaguar XKR. Paul's car really looks the best out of all these cars we're looking at. Watch it come off the corners. Paul's not fish tailing the car much. The car's not jumping around in the brake zone. It's pretty stable. Everyone else is uh, varying degrees of broad sliding around here. Look there at Tommy Archer and the Control Concepts Dodge Viper. And there's Andre Tonis from right here in Houston. He is stuck. And John Bisignano has a word from the pits. They are preparing down here in the Genelosi pit for a possible stop by Paul. He is radioed in and has a vibration in the drive line. Of course, the gearbox and final drive, drive train take a tremendous beating, accelerating out of these 90 degree left-hand corners. Paul does not want to come in, but they don't want him to break the car. They might bring it in for a look. Oh no, could it be happening again to Paul Gentilosi? Boy, it gives you two choices now. He's either gonna to have to try to slow down, pamper his race car, try to get it nursed at home to the finish, or, Stay full speed and hope to get a stop. I don't know. With the championship on line, I think I'd be playing a conservative now. Tommy Archer has gotten around Lou Gelati for fourth place. Archer, the winner at Portland this year. First win in the Trans Am for the Dodge Viper. And he is moving up. Johnny Miller is the next car up the road. Aiden Reese, winless this year. He did pick up his first series win in the 2000 season. There is Simon Gregg. Oh, and look at the left front tire. Look at that oil. That Ooh. is oil. That is not good at all. Don't step in it. Whoops. Well, that shows you exactly the problem the drivers face when there's oil on the road. Let's see if we can figure out what happened to Simon Gregg. Well, you saw the smoke right there as he got on the throttle coming off that corner. I suspect he's had a catastrophic engine failure. So the great Peter Gregg, he is now out of the race. That makes two cars out, and that works to the benefit of the man in the black number three, Paul Genelosi, as he seeks any place in the top 20 that would lock up his third championship. Tommy Archer closing up on Johnny Miller. John Bisignano has more on him. He is driving in some pain. Mid-season, Tommy Archer had a serious accident in private testing, trying to get ready for the second half of the season. He damaged a lot of ribs on the left-hand side of his body. Now, they have adjusted the seat to where he was okay for on that left-hand side of his body, but all the G-forces that were throwing him right coming out of these left-hand turns, he noticed that he was very sore on the right-hand side of his body, and the doctors actually said that there were some hairline fractures over there that previously went unnoticed. So they made the seat neutral, but he has been driving in great pain out there during every single practice and qualifying. He is one tough customer out of Duluth, Minnesota, Tommy Archer. Look at Brian Simo now all over the back of Jen Losey for the lead. Miller and Archer watching this from behind. Brian's been real aggressive for the last two laps. In fact, since the restart, he's been hounding Paul real hard. Uh, and back here he goes. Down the inside goes Brian Simo to take over the race lead, and Johnny Miller right there. Miller desperately needs to get ahead of the black car of Genelosi to have any shot at the championship. Boy, Paul taking a little defensive line there. Johnny going even up the inside further. And Miller goes by, and Archer right there as well. Well, I think they bumped. I think Archer, I think Archer just gave a little rub to Genelosi. Ooh, uh, payback maybe. Oh, Genelosi gave it right back. Archer goes around. He's going to lose all kinds of positions on the track. Now, this is the problem with street track. When you get turned sideways like that, at least he's not all the way around 180, but it's hard to get the car to turn. Uh, trying to find your way back in line when no one wants to let you in. Well, wow. you know, I he bumped Genelosi just a little bit when he turned in on him in there. I think Paul got him back. But Genelosi way back up the track. I wonder if those problems that Biz talked about earlier are slowing Genelosi down. He has every reason to be conservative, but he has to be very, very careful. Here's another look at the pass as Simo goes underneath. Now here comes Miller, and Archer will be right behind him. Watch for the contact. I think Miller, you know, I think Genelosi gave that to Miller, but here, watch, watch here. Side to side, I think they bump right there. And of course, one corner up the racetrack, here is Paul Genelosi giving the fender. Well, in Genelosi's defense, to be fair, he came bounding in down that washboard area of pavement under braking. 
one way or another Archer has gone backwards and Jenna Losey not looking too good right now either we have a new leader in Brian Simo and Johnny Miller is in second plastic holds the promise of a better world taking Welcome back to the Texaco Haviland Grand Prix of Houston. Final stop of the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup. Ryan Simo leads with Johnny Miller in second, Paul Genelosi in third, and this was Justin Bell, this year's Rookie of the Year, taking fourth from Lou Gelati. Boy, he just drove it right in there and squared off and uh, didn't let the Gelati turn in on him. Here's a look at our Amerisuites rookie standings. Justin Bell has been absolutely dominant. Son of the great endurance racer Derek Bell, frequent commentator here on Speed Vision. And I tell you, Justin's done a fantastic job of learning this race car, the Trans Am car, over the cars he's driven in the past. First half of the season was a learning curve. He's got it now. He's won one race already, so he knows definitely what it takes. He wants to come back and run for the championship next year. In fact, we asked a number of drivers what their plans are for next season. Here's what they told us. The economy's tough right now. And we both have, Johnny and I both have sponsors that are affected by the auto industry and, and by the events of recent months. So uh, if we're blessed enough to come back, we'll be here. Uh, the Rocket Sports package has been fantastic. Paul's been very great. Uh, and, and so I'm looking to do that again. If I can get it all worked out. Racing Trans Am is, is what I do. Um, I want to stay a part of Trans Am racing for as long as I can. And if it's not racing, it may be team owning someday. So I'm anxious to be a part of it. And uh, there's certainly opportunity here. And um, no doubt you'll see me back here and, and uh, hopefully supporting these Tommy Bahama colors again next year. Uh, I signed a two-year contract when I came on board. So now I just got to hope that uh, we can continue with the effort of this team because next year I want to be fighting for the championship. I really want to come back with the kind of budget that we need to, to run up front. I mean, we, we really could run... We could run better than we are now with a bigger but with with a budget. Forget about a bigger budget. So we're looking to come back. Uh, we're looking to come back with a, either a teammate or a sponsor and see what we can do in uh, 2002. We'll certainly be back uh, with what package. We're still like most people. We're still uh, trying to determine what what that package will be. But I'm sure it'll we'll be in a Jaguar. We'll be with a Maris Suites. I'm pretty positive. And uh, you know it's been a great season for us. And I think we now know what it what it takes to win. And we, we definitely want to go back there and we want to win a championship, no question. Win the championship in Trans Am uh, would be my goal for 2002. Um, if I, I don't know what I'm going to do team wise yet, I'd like to stay with Jim Derhug. Um, it's all financial um, to see whether we can put the deal together. Well, it's been said that motorsports are the first sport to be affected by recession and the last one to come out. And it's also why they call it silly season, because it's all hit the fan now. It's all speculation. We hope to see the Trans Am strong again next year. Certainly a terrific year in 2001. We'll be back with more from Houston. Back in Houston, Brian Simmo's the race leader. Johnny Miller in second. Points leader Paul Genelosi is third. And looking racing once again, John Mizzignano has more on Paul. Well, the vibration that was reported in Paul Genelosi's drivetrain doesn't seem to be getting any worse. He definitely has slowed, but he's in a comfortable position. Now, remember, he only has to finish 20th or better to become champion. So the team is very much watching retirements. When they get down to 20 cars on the track, Paul Genelosi is the Trans Am champion. Well, John, I think Paul would be the first to tell you we've got a long way to go, barely a third of the way into this one. Paul Genelosi is hoping right now he's lost a wheel weight on one of his tires, and that's his vibration, because that's the only vibration that isn't terminal. Pit lane here in Houston, by the way, is very complex. Very tough to get back out on the racetrack. You lose a lot of time if you need to come in and stop for whatever reason. This is Lou Gelati, Mike Lewis just behind. Leighton Reese behind Lewis. All right, Laura, Mike Lewis has been trying and trying, sliding the car around. I think he'd be faster if he could get by Lou, but Lou not having him yet right now. This is for fifth place. Among the top six, the only driver without a victory this season is Johnny Miller, who runs in second place, contending for the championship. But he has been very consistent. He's only finished sixth on two occasions and never lower than that. Tommy Archer, 
course, he went way, way back after he got that uh, spin from uh, John Losey. He's up to 11th now, but it uh, took him a long time to get that turned around. Once again, as John Bisignano mentioned earlier, he is driving in some pain. He's probably driving with a little bit of anger right now, too. Yeah, I would say so. That helps the pain, too. It's Randy Ruhlman just ahead in 10th place. Down the inside goes Archer to take over 10th place. And he's got more positions up ahead. I would think he'd be able to dispatch of these guys pretty quickly. He's got a really fast race car. We saw it before when he was running up in fourth. So he's working them over pretty good. That is Dan Miller in the 05 in ninth place just ahead out of Vancouver, Washington. In front of him, Mike Davis. Boris said is not running this weekend. He normally has the 33 car for that team, but of course he's uh, doing duty at Petit Le Mans. On the long back straightaway, and Archer once again pulls out of the slipstream, goes down the inside under braking. Nice clean pass for ninth. Davis will be next in eighth place. Does have time on his side, does Tommy Archer, and he's obviously got a fast race car. Back to the race leader, Brian Simone. Look at the rubber being laid down in those corners. These guys, when they come off the corners, they just, you know, these things bark. They just tear up the asphalt and put down the rubber. You can see it every time they run. There's Johnny Miller, then Paul Genelosi. Behind him, Justin Bell. Justin Bell, Motorsports Experience, Chevy Corvette. Your top four. We'll be back in a moment. Speed Vision's coverage of the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup is brought to you by Amerisuites, America's affordable all-suite hotel. Don't downsize, Amerisize. Back in Houston, race leader Brian Simo and the Tommy Bahama Mangusta is out the bottom of your screen. There's Johnny Miller and Paul Genelosi. Still locked in battle on the racetrack for second and for the Trans Am Championship and the VF Goodrich Tires Cup. I wonder if Johnny Miller's crew, which is the same crew that uh, Genelosi has, has told him that Genelosi's having trouble. A problem here for Tommy Driese, serving a penalty. Black flag to see the official sending him on his way. And he leaves an angry pair of tire tracks in the pit lane. Here's a look at what happened. Jim Ooh. Matthews spins right there in front of Jerry Simmons. It looks like uh, Tommy Driese's had to go into the escape area. We don't see the car yet. That is not his normal car. Oh. That's why he looks fun. Oh, my goodness. There's the problem. He backs up on the racetrack. Wow. That's Johnny Miller's car, actually, that was lent to him because of the amount of damage that he had in his last race crash. So a different car, but, boy, that was a close one. Approaching the halfway point of the race. And the race leader is working lapped traffic. Well, it looks like Jen Lowe is just staying right there with Miller. It looks like the car's like, okay, maybe it was a wheel weight. Getting a lot of rubber buildup off the racing line. You see it up against the concrete wall. All these cars started on the softer of the BF Goodrich compounds available this weekend. John Visignano has an update on how they're holding up. This is a problem that a lot of drivers have been having all weekend long. They're flat spotting the left front tire. When they go around these 90 degree bends, there's so much force on the car that's actually lifting the left front on the ground, but not all the way. It's still skipping along the surface of the road, causing these flat spots. BFG can't do anything about it. It's not a tire problem. It's just the mechanics of so much G-force going around these 90 degree bends. Well, that's one of the things on a street course where if you play with your brake uh, bias and your brake pad compound, it is really hard to feel that lockup when that tire gets unloaded like that. But that flat spot, if you get one of those, that's just about the end of your day right there. The battle for second, Johnny Miller and Paul Genelosi go by the yellow painos of Claudio Bertin, and down the inside goes Genelosi looking for second. And Miller just lets him have it. There's no problem whatsoever. And in front of that, did you see Mike Davis's car? Look at the left part of the wing. It's got a passing flag. There's actually a flag they stick out there when faster cars are approaching to let you know that they're going to pass you. He must have snatched it right out of the corner worker's hand, and it's on his wing. Taking flagging to a whole new level. 
Let's take another look. There's the, the flag flapping on the rear, rear wing end plate. And there is the pass. Genelosi under his teammate Miller with the Boy. championship at stake. And his, Miller didn't fight a little harder. Right. Miller just let that happen. Now, would, would he have done that for Simo? I don't think so. I mean, he just left that door wide open. Now we got a caution in this corner as well. This is where Tommy Dreesey backed up at the end of the back straightaway. Indication what it was for. Obviously, someone's. Uh oh. Uh, Hey, that's that's Mike Davis, and there's that flag. There's the passing flag. <laughs> it's just it's it actually got ripped out of the corner of his hand. That's the only way it could be there like that. That's amazing. I've never seen anything like that before. It's hung right on that wing. <laughs> huh. Race leader Simo. Here comes Genelosi in second. Miller in third. It's Bertine in the yellow painos on the left. On the right, Justin Bell, number 40. Justin hasn't been showing a lot of aggression so far either. He's just kind of sitting back watching these guys in front of him. This racing school is based at Moroso Motorsports Park in South Florida. It's great to see him pick up his first win. Father Derek was there at Laguna Seca, almost fell off the top of the transporter. He was watching the race from as he celebrated. We'll be back. Back to the streets of Houston, Texas. You're watching the battle for fifth place. Gelati, Mike Lewis right there in the Amerisuites car. And Leighton Reese. Two Corvettes sandwiching a Jaguar XKR. It looks like Lou Gelati now has actually uh, got a little bit better run going. Here's that flag. We've been talking about that. That's on Mike Davis's car. And he's going to... Oh, it's a handoff. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this a relay race? He gave it to Andre Tonus. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that before. That is amazing and clean. I don't think there was any contact between them. That's close racing there. <laughs> a flag handoff. I like it. Checking the Amerisuites leaderboard just past the halfway point in the race. We still have 22 of the 24 starters circulating. So if that driveline violation that Paul Genelosi is reportedly suffering from gets any worse, he could still finish outside the top 20. And Johnny Miller could wind up as champion. There's the battle, Genelosi in black, Miller in the green car. And we're gonna get down the inside, gently boys, nope. See, Paul didn't let him have it. Paul raced him off the car. Of course, now that's a better launch right there for Johnny Miller. I think Paul's being real light on the gas when he gets off these corners. I think he's just really blending it in. That vibration's got to really have him worried. And now Justin Bell's at the tail. Well, Genelosi has some places to give. Anywhere in the top 20 will lock up that historic third championship for him. If Johnny Miller goes on to win the race, but there's a man who has disappeared over the horizon, Brian Simo, may have something to say about that. Here's another look at the pass. Well, Miller had the inside. You saw him twitch one time when he got on the throttle. Like I say, I think Paul is just uh, blending. And look at this. That is Justin Bell now has taken over third place from Paul Genelosi. So the order is now Simo, Miller, Bell, and Genelosi. And Justin Bell able to drive away in the Corvette. Here's another look. They just set him up perfectly coming off down to the long straightaway, moves to the inside. An advantage of the streets, there's no defined racing line. You can find grip just about anywhere. Let's get more from Biz on Paul Genelosi. Well, the vibration in Paul Genelosi's car is certainly still very much there. He slowed down a little bit. It seemed to go away just a bit, and then he sped up, and it came right back. So in the team, they're trying to slow him down, telling him to just go for a good finish, not for the win or for a top three podium position. And Paul seems to be following those instructions. The vibration has not gotten any worse, but it's still very much a part of his afternoon. Well, the bad part is, you know, those vibrations didn't get any worse, but it's not getting any better either. Exactly. And the crew is doing the right thing. Oh, no, there's Andre Tonus, who's pitied, I guess, for nothing more than to get that blue flag off his rear wing. <laughs> Look at his crew guys back there. Crew guys are going, what's that all about? Now, here's the handoff right here. It's on Mike Davis's. Here, Andre, you take it. You run for a while. <laughs> Perfect that is handoff. the most extraordinary thing I've seen in a long time. <laughs> 
I wonder if he got black flag to have that flag removed or not. Black flag for a blue flag. That would be a first. Well, technically, since it's a no passing flag, nobody can pass them on. <laughs> 35 laps are now complete. Ryan Simo's the leader. We'll be back to Houston in a moment. Welcome back to Houston, Texas. Bob Barsha, Dorsey Schrader with you. Final round of the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup. There's the race leader, Brian Simo, lapping the car. We have local yellow flags at the end of the start-finish straightaway. Yeah, they got a yellow and a debris flag or oil flag there at the end. But uh, everybody going on. Lou Gelati, Mike Lewis behind him. Well, look at Mike Lewis really drove it in deep under brake. Of course, I think Lou Gelati backed off because that yellow was waving there. And uh, all that says is you can't pass. It doesn't mean you can't make up ground. I think Mike Lewis just took advantage and took a couple car lengths away. Back up to speed now. Rubber marbles continue to build up offline. Twitch there from Gelati. And these two are closing up on Paul Genelosi, who continues to drift backward through this field. That would have aggravated Lou Gelati if he, uh, if he got out of that car because of the yellow and then Mike Lewis didn't. Uh, and look at this now, now under full attack. Gelati can hold on a few more corners. They'll be back at the local yellow, assuming it hasn't been removed. And they are closing up on Paul Genelosi in fourth. I think Paul has finally decided that he's going to have to nurse his baby home and uh, not work. There's a 43 is off. That's Andre Tonis. We had that flag earlier. He is off and out of the car. Counting the cars, we understand Don Sack is also officially out of the race. So if Tonus is done and he has walked away from the car, so it figures he is, that means four cars are out of the 24 starters, means that Paul Genelosi is assured of at least a 20th place finish, and that unofficially would make him the 2001 Trans Am champion. Well, boy, it's got to be frustrating as he sits there trying to keep that car together. Now I see that the, the corner worker at the back there with two yellow flags, which means that the full course is probably now indeed going to come out. And these guys don't care. Right back there, the Lucilotti and Mike Lewis hammer and tong trying to get around Genelosi. And there it is, a full course caution. I'm assuming it's for Tonus's stranded car sure exactly where on the racetrack he is but yep it's official now we have a full course caution and the safety car will come out to pick up the race leader Brian Simo so the yellow flag comes out on lap 43 there's Tonus's car which appears to be well off the racetrack and there is the driver walking in always tough to drop out of your home race Brian Simo a huge advantage has now been completely negated. Kind of, kind of hate when that happens. He still have lapped cars between himself and the second place machine of Johnny Miller. We'll take a break and return for more from Houston after this. Welcome back to Houston, Texas. Still under our second full course caution of the day at the Texaco Haviland Grand Prix of Houston. There you see the race leader, Brian Simo. This is our 11th race of the season. The teams have traveled coast to coast. You might ask yourself how they bring everything with them that they need. John Pizzignano has more. Joe Tranchita is the owner of Sinjo Racing and the man responsible for making Tommy Archer go as fast as possible. One of those elements, Joe, is to give him the best shop away from home as possible, your transporter. That's right, this high-tech performance trailer travels over 35,000 miles throughout the year, and it brings everything that our guys need to work just as if they were at the shop. Well, let's look around a little bit. All these cabinets here on the side, of course, they all types of spare parts. That's right. Over the weekend, if we have to rebuild a transmission, here's the place to do it. Our mechanic has this all set up for him. Now, Tommy Archer, he can damage a car a little bit trying to get it as fast as possible. Suspension bits stored somewhere? Actually, we have a complete car in pieces. Suspension pieces, rear ends, spring shocks, body pieces. One complete car plus one that you can actually 
build from scratch. As we travel, the complete car is up there along with all the pieces, body parts, that we can make a second car. Now, shocks have become so important to making a car go fast these days. You get all the computer analysis off the car, and you come in here and start going to work. Well, when Tommy comes off the track, he debriefs with our race engineer, Will Moody. They look at the data, and this is where they decide what to do with the shock absorbers and how to out, what else they can do to the car to make it quicker over the weekend. Now, all that think tank actually goes in a little bit of space of luxury, and sponsors nowadays want to get out of the heat, so you have a very nice lounge up front. Heated and air-conditioned lounge for uh, debriefing between Tommy and Will and entertaining our uh, sponsor, Control Concepts Corporation. So the transporter is like any element of the team. It's here to lower lap times. It's, it's here to get the most we can out of the car. It helps keep our people comfortable because it's heated and air conditioned. And it's also a traveling billboard for Concept Controls Corporation. And when it's fully loaded, going down the road, they have over a half a million dollars worth of equipment going to the next race. All right, thank you, Biz. Here's a look at the High Tech Trailers Owners Championship points for the 2001 season, dominated by Rocket Sports Racing. Points go to the teams that do the best job of promoting the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup. We are ready to go racing once again as Brian Simo leads Johnny Miller with two lapped cars in between, and Miller wants to start passing immediately. guy's got lap traffic in between him, so that's hold him up. And remember, all these cars are real close to the same speed, so even a lap car can hold you up quite, quite badly. Miller picks off a Panos Esperante. Another lap car up ahead as they swing onto the long back straight. That's Jerry Simmons right in front of, um, of uh, the car right there. Here comes Justin Bell now looking up the inside. Steve Pelkey in the Stars and Stripes. Last race for the veteran Trans Am driver. Bell goes by. Paul Genelosi takes advantage of the opportunity to go underneath Pelkey as well. And now Justin Bell right in front of him has Kerry Alexander that he's going to have to deal with that car. That the Pangos Esperante. And here he comes up the inside. Justin Bell coming forward. Genelosi is there sliding around a bit. Ooh, sliding yeah. around a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's decided he wants by Kerry, too, and puts him down now. Yeah. Travel on the back of Jerry Simmons' car. I saw it go through there. He's dragging something, too. Might be a banner off the wall. I'm not sure. It's on the right rear of his car, but it's flapping around in the breeze. So. Blue flag waving from the flag stand above the start-finish line, but these guys are focused on the job. Very tight section right here. Bob Ruman, we saw him in trouble earlier in the show. Back underway. Now he's trying to get back up to the front. Lewis passes Kerry Alexander. Oh, we got a spin. That Late. is Leighton Reese, who has lost it uh, in the break zone back to that corner. Well, he's going to lose all kinds of track position here. Yeah, I don't know if he got helped a little bit. Somebody maybe bumped him or not, but you know, he's got damage to the front, though. Look at the right front. Tire's not down. It might just be the bodywork. Looks like he took a left hook. Let's see if we can see what happened to him. You can see the car coming around as he enters the braking zone. Yeah, oh. and he, oh, he got hit right there by Bob Ruman. The spin wasn't over. Ruman clipped the left front corner. This ought to be a better look. Ah, right there. He basically spears Ruman. John Bisignano has more. Well, you just saw Leighton Reese take a big spin, and what might be going on, there's a lot of people slipping and sliding, is that the tires certainly cooled off during that full course yellow. Earlier, it was taking people a good six laps to get the tire temperatures back up where they had full grip. We're down under 70 degrees ambient temperature now, so for the first few laps after this full course yellow, you're going to be, it'll look like people are driving on ice. I guess as the temperature falls here at Houston, uncharacteristically cool day today. Comfortable for the spectators, but it's making life miserable on the racetrack. We're into the final 10 laps of the final race of the year. Welcome back to the closing laps 
of the final race of the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup. Ryan Simo leads Johnny Miller and the smiling Jaguar. And Justin Bell getting very racy in the closing laps of this race. is all over Miller for second place. Well, I said a little while ago that uh, he was looking pretty smooth. We don't even see Paul Genelosi right now because I'm sure he's in cruise mode. His crew, if they know, four cars are about that will have told him that he's uh, he's going to be the champion if that's the case. Genelosi is currently sixth. Johnny Miller had a lurch a moment ago coming off the corner. I wonder if his tires are shot. His Bell is just all over him, and Bell has been conservative in the opening laps, so he might have lots of rubber under him as he goes underneath Johnny Miller for second. And Johnny didn't make that one look as easy as he had when Paul Genelosi passed him before. He pinched uh, Justin a little bit. I think Justin sat back here and if uh, he's conserved tires, I think he's going to be really good. Well, he's on his way now. John Bisignano has more from the pit lane. Well, Justin Bell did a great job of squeezing by Johnny Miller finally there. And the team has set up the car to have its best handling characteristics in the later part of the race. As the fuel goes down, as actually the tires become more worn, they've had the handling characteristics come into exactly what they want. It was the plan from the start. He's done a great job of managing his car from the very beginning. Right now, he's considered the fastest car out on the track, and he's headed for first place. Well, I'll tell you what, that management is the key thing. You can play that strategy, and no one knows it better than Jim Durhawk, but you have to have a driver that'll save it to the end. Join the style that has made him a Trans Am race winner, a former world champion in the FIA GT2 category a few years back. Of course, the son of a racing legend, making a name for himself, Justin Bell. Here's another look as he dives from right to left and gets underneath Miller for second place. Boy, he got it in there really good and deep, and the car stayed right underneath him. Now, he begins to close up on Brian Simo for the race lead. You saw the back of the car just then twitch out. Now Justin being pretty aggressive with the throttle. You saw the back slide off the corner and be the low power steer, power oversteer. Simo responds, the same driving technique. Let's see if Simo has something left for the Trans Am Rookie of the Year. Look at the spent rubber out there, too. Long left-hander. Look at Brian, big power slide off the corner. Justin, on the other hand, got all of the power down. Much better run. That Corvette is quick. And look at Simo, the back end wagging the front all around the racetrack right now. Slower traffic up ahead. That's Bertine in the Painos Esperante. See if Bell can pin the race leader behind the slower traffic. Now down the inside of the Painos goes Simo. Bell will follow. It's all about getting the line. Look at Brian. Oh. He is out of rear tire right now. He's got the tires too hot, and Justin knows it. You can hear the wheel spin. The rev spike. Now, if I were Justin, I'd be setting him up to get a good run on the long straightaway. If Brian slides and he doesn't, he should get the top end. In the back straight, not quite close enough. Thinking about it. Definitely making his presence known. Look at that. There it was. That might have just done it, that slide right there. Yeah, and the Corvette just tracked out perfectly. Credit Simo, he is doing everything he can with a very unruly race car right now. He's getting more driving per turn than anybody out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bell very close now. When will he make his move, and what will Simo do to try to hold him off? Looks like he's got the run going. Oh, did you hear the engine? That was perfect braking. Did you hear the engine go? The rear tires just about locked up, which was locking the engine up. That was close. That was great. So we have a new race leader. Oh, and we have an accident. Jerry Simmons, he's backed it in pretty hard the way it looks. Ontario, California, taking a huge chunk out of the right rear. Well, he's got damage all down the right side. Oh, look at the right front wheel bent badly. New leader, Justin Bell. We saw Simmons rolling. We'll see if they throw the yellow flag. Or if 
Smith. They'll let these two race it out. Now Simmo looks down the inside. I think I saw a yellow back there, too, as a matter of fact. Here's the pass. Justin got a better run off the corner, drives it right down to the inside. The remarkable thing was listening to the warble of the engine because the braking was so severe, it was almost locked up. Wow, that was a big hit. That was Jerry Simmons just moments ago. That's at the end of the back straightaway from top speed. Well, Brian, Brian wants that back. I don't think he's got enough car under him to do it. The car all over the racetrack. Coming up on the last lap. He can waste them now. And Bell hold on for his second consecutive victory and the second of his Trans Am career. Saw how smooth he was when he won his first race. Looks to be the same thing again. He's using all the racetrack, not sliding too much. Well, this is fun watching two terrific young drivers. Looks like he might be able to do something. This is on the back straight. He's going to run out of corners if he doesn't move soon. Just a little too far behind right now. And there's that big power slide again. That's where Simmons crashed. Oh, there is Simmons. That is Simmons. Yeah, oh boy. Just a couple of corners remaining. You see the fans on their feet cheering this battle to the end. One more corner. Simo closes up. On to the start finish straightaway. The checkered flag waves over Justin Bell as he collects his second victory of the season. And he does it in style in the final race of the 2001 campaign. Now oh. this is for third. Lou Gelati gets pushed in the back by Michael Lewis. Tommy Archer gets by as well. Oh boy, Lewis just capped him. There's Paul Genelosi's crew. They know it's a done deal now. His third championship. While Justin Bell collects victory and is about to jump out of his belts. <laughs> we got a little Italian temper here, folks. That's Gelati trapping Mike Lewis. Trapped him at the end of the straightaway. He is not a happy camper. And our story is a long way from finish. We'll sort things out when we return to Houston, Texas. Stay with us. Welcome back to Houston. There is Lou Gelati, who has just gotten out of his car and gone ballistic. Talking to a Trans Am official. I don't think that's talking. I think it's, it's a little bit more than talking. He is absolutely livid. The crew trying to calm their driver down. Gelati was bumped by Michael Lewis off the final corner in the run to the flag. Lewis and Tommy Archer got by Gelati. Oh. He is absolutely apoplectic. Here's another look. This is what it takes to set him off. One little hit right there. Mike Lewis loosened him up, got by. That was more than one hit, it looked like. Could have been, actually. You're right. Probably a couple bumps. Well, we'll have to see what officials do with that, but Biz is with the man of the hour. Paul Genelosi, for the third time, I get to congratulate you on being the Trans Am champion. Well, Biz, it means more coming from you, but I can't tell you how blessed I am to have a group of people that, that really are family to me to, to believe in what we're doing enough to win three championships. There are a lot of guys out there who would give anything in life to win a race and then one championship, and I've been blessed to win three. I can't tell you how much this means to me. And the Rocket Sports team, all year long, dominant in every position, finishing 1-2 in the championship. Yeah. A lot of good work for Jaguar. Well, we're really honored to be part of their racing tradition. The Trans Am Series, as we could see by the bleachers today, the folks at home that watched this race, this place was jammed with people. They were on their feet. They saw a wonderful race. And I'm really proud to be part of that tradition. Now, how nervous were you about that vibration? I didn't think that we'd get to halfway. It started on lap 7. I called the crew on lap 10. When we got to halfway, I said, we're not going to finish. We better start counting cars here because I really, truly didn't believe we were going to finish the race. I, I don't know why I'd hang on. Well, I think Herb Johnson has something for you from BFG. Herb? Paul, on half of BF Goodrich tires, I'm glad to present you with this trophy for your third Trans Am championship. Congratulations yeah. to you and the Rocket Sports team. This is, you know, it's a wonderful honor to win this trophy, but it's an even better honor when Herb's got to give it to me. There you go. <laughs> it's a heavy trophy. Congratulations, Rocket Spurts! Yeah. All right. 
Congratulations indeed to Paul Genalosi. Here's a look at the unofficial results of the race. Justin Bell is second victory of the year. Tommy Archer shown in third. Lou Gelati in fourth. Mike Lewis was bumped by officials from third to fifth. Why Tommy Archer was allowed to benefit from Miller's illegal act, I'm not sure, but there it is, and I'm sure the arguments will go on for some time about this one. Johnny Miller, you see, in 10th place, ran out of gas, but his shot at the championship was never very firm, given the way Paul Gentilosi was able to run to the finish. Tommy Dreese finishes in 11th. Bob Ruman in 12th. They both had very interesting days. Steve Pelkey in his final Trans Am appearance finishes in 15th place. 16th through 20th, Paul Fix, John Baucom, Mike Davis, Jerry Simmons had that heavy accident in the final laps of the race. And Jim Matthews in his Mangusta finishes in 20th. There are the final four. Race winner Justin Bell is standing by now with John Bisignano down in victory lane. John? Justin, congratulations on such a fantastic drive. Laguna Seca is one thing, but to win in between these city streets, between these hard walls, great satisfaction for you. Very much. I, I was hoping I was, the others were so fast, I was able to sort of keep to a pace. And then I went, you know what, I've got a bit left, so time to go in the right direction. But your car was the fastest right when it should be slowing down. At the end of the race, you managed everything beautifully. I think it comes from the sports cars, you know, those big Corvettes and Vipers and stuff. And I was able to, you know, keep it where I needed it. And for the team, I mean, AJ, Quinn, uh, you know, Jim, Pat, incredible. Everybody who's been behind me this year. I think we proved Trans Am is the place that we should stay and, and do the business next year. Two great wins, rookie of the year. It could not have turned out better for you. No, it couldn't. Um, you know, not unless, you know, $5 million check or something would just about make it perfect. <laughs> no, it was incredible. You know, I've got, had some great people, Ralph, Bill, Kevin, John, everyone at the driving school, Ken, all the guys, Guy, uh, Doug, incredible. I mean, just fantastic. God. Congratulations on a great win. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Definitely his father's son after a GT World Championship and a victory at Le Mans and Dodge Viper, Justin Bell is at home in the Trans Am. We'll be back. Speed Vision's coverage of the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup has been presented by BF Goodrich Tires. Take control and brought to you by Wix Lumber in association with Capital Windows, Anderson Windows, Quilogy, and Trilithic. Welcome back. The celebrations are underway after the final race of the Trans Am Series for the BF Goodrich Tires Cup. Once again, here's John Bisignano. Brian Simmel, congratulations. I know second place doesn't seem like any type of thing to congratulate you on right now. What a great drive you had. Yeah, it was a good day for the Tommy Bahama Valvoline team. Uh, you know, Tom Gloy team put together a great car, and uh, at the end there just wasn't enough for us to uh, put the power down at the end. Obviously, the... Uh, uh, Justin's car had uh, the ability to put the power down significantly better than us in the end. So uh, that, was, uh, that, was the that was the deal. A, gr a great drive in the opening lap, some fantastic passing. Where could you get by them in the early stages? Well, you know, uh, the disparity was there, so it made it a little easy, and there was some forgiveness out there, and there was some that, uh, that weren't quite so forgiving. But uh, you know, the traffic overall, after we're racing with these guys for a season, they were, they were pretty commendable for their effort, you know. So it was a... It was a good weekend. He's going to be back in 2002, stronger than ever. Count on that. Thank you, John. Here's a look at the final standings. Paul Genelosi gets his third championship and joins Mark Donahue and Tommy Kendall as a three-time Trans Am titleist. Brian Simo and Johnny Miller finish in a tie for second. Tommy Archer in fourth. And Justin Bell in his Rookie of the Year season in fifth place. A good year for Lou Gelati, who finishes sixth. Boris said missed the final round of the championship, but still ranks in the top ten, followed by Bob Ruman and Leighton Reese, who did not win this season following his first career victory a year ago. And finishing 11th through 15th, Tommy Dreese, Simon Gregg, Dan Miller, Randy Ruhlman, Ruhlman in a tie with Mike Davis for 14th. Now let's get back down to Biz, who is caught up with what has to be a bitterly disappointed Johnny Miller. Johnny, you looked like you were enjoying yourself out there most of the time. What happened at the end? 
Well, we, we did run. We ran out of fuel. Uh, we had uh, we're going for everything we can get on the motor, and sometimes you give it more fuel. And I, I think that uh, may have hurt us a little bit. Uh, the green flag definitely no lack of cautions hurt us, and we planned on more cautions. And uh, it ran around there two laps with the fuel pressure gauge on zero, <laughs> and it crossed the line on the starter. I, I don't know where we finished, and it was a heck of a run. You know, about the time we got up to steam, and uh, everybody started catching me in and I said, well, I started to run out of car and so I was backing up and uh, it was it was a wild race. So. Congratulations on a great season. Had to be your best ever. It was my best ever and I tell you, you know, I, I, I'm it's pretty pretty bad when you're complaining about where we finished, you know, so I'm not. I'm very happy and um, we'll get ready for next year. Back stronger in 2002. Well, I was wrong. Johnny Miller is very upbeat about his season. Good on him. Here's another look at Lou Gelati being bumped by Mike Lewis. We all know that Gelati was absolutely beside himself with officials afterward. Lewis was dropped from third to fifth in the final standings. Gelati got fourth, and standing by with Biz. Lou, a great drive. Long Beach was fantastic. You had third place. Then what happened? <laughs> we had third place, and uh, Mike Lewis, uh, two, two things can't occupy the same space at the same time. So Mike made a mistake. I hope he uh, knows he made a mistake. Uh, if he doesn't, I'll let him know he made, made a mistake. But um, it, we really finished third place, but what are you going to do? That's racing. I mean, uh, I think uh, they're going to they're going to do something, move us up a little bit. But uh, Tommy Archer was right there, and and he's the one that's going to end up with third, I believe. You managed the entire package, a car that you've built, your family has worked on with you, and it's one of the fastest cars out there against these factory drives from other people. We're really happy about that. We, you know, with my crew, Mike Gertz, Ryan Sprung, my my son Lewis, uh, Danny Vogt, we've got a heck of a crew. You know, we work with no money. We stretch a nickel into a quarter, and we, you know, we're happy. Congratulations on a great run. Thanks. I think you could sense the emotion in Lou Gelati's voice. He and his modestly budgeted team have done very well this season. And an interesting season it was. Final thoughts, Dorsey Schrader? Well, Bob, possibly a new era in Trans Am racing. Again, the advent and the return of the pit stop. And that man right there, Justin Bell, making his presence known possibly the first ever baton or flag toss if you will that's certainly a memory i'll keep for a long time there it is once again the errant blue flag we thank you for joining us for the entire trans am season for the bf goodrich tires cup here on speed vision congratulations to race winner justin bell and to series champion paul genelosi for Dorsey Schrader and John Visignano, I'm Bob Varsha, as well as for Greg Kramer, who was on the mic all season long with you but could not be here for the season finale. We'll see you in 2002, everyone. So long for now.